Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to create one of those gradients. This is going to be the background of this print. So I've created two colors and I'm blending them by moving the brayer back and forth. Hopefully creating a good blend here. Getting just the right amount of ink on there. These oil-based inks? Yes. These are Speedball brand block printing inks and brayers. And I use the Speedball carving tools, which are not professional grade. And I have a wonderful professional block print artist girlfriend who, when she found out I was using the speedball cutters, are you out of your blankety blank mind? <laughs> but I'm used to them and they work for me, so whatever. Okay. Uh, sorry. No, good. Here, here's my sort of gradient. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that looks when I print. This is a jig that Bob built for me. I didn't use a jig back in the old days. I, as I explained, I just did the hand-eye thing, which was crazy. Wait, but this works better. Okay. Trying not to let ink land in the negative space. If anybody has questions, please feel free to ask. You have to be careful not to move the roller too far up or down. Yes. <coughs> right. And I deliberately chose a, a wide roller. You don't seem to be using the jig to hold it steady though. I mean that could nope. be on any surface. I don't, I don't want to get ink on these no. edges where the paper is going to land. Yeah. Um, I don't even on need this to be on the jig for this part. Oh, okay. That's I'm going to use the jig, the jig for, for the okay. printing part. Okay. I hope, I don't know if that's enough ink. I'm going to add a little bit more ink. Can we ask you questions while you're doing this? Yes. Do you why, explain why you can't wash the blocks and reuse them? Ooh. Why you can't wash? Why can't, why can't you reuse blocks? Is there no way to wash, remove the ink from them and start over? Because you mentioned having to redo prints, but having to recarve them. Oh, I shouldn't have had to. I didn't really have to recarve them. Okay. I just wanted to recarve okay. them in order to improve the design. Oh. Okay. That's a good question. That was just me always wanting to tweak the design and make it better. And have you ever experienced repetitive motion problems with your hands doing the leaves and the weights? That's amazing. Nope. That's, you're blessed. Well, I'm not doing this constantly. Where yeah. is my... Yeah, could be. You know, I, I do an addition of block prints and then maybe it's... I really have to confess oh. that I spend probably 90% of my working time doing marketing and business. Ugh. Maybe 10, probably not even 10% making art. Wow. Fortunately, I enjoy mar the marketing. I enjoy writing e-newsletters. I enjoy, I do customer email all day. Mm -hmm. Answering customer emails, wow. but I enjoy that. So how but difficult I, is it to I go from your hard. kind of your print, your picture, to to four colors coming up with the the cutting or what you how you're going to cut each of the four colors? I mean, is that is that something you're experimenting with, or is that something? When you look at a picture, a picture like a photograph, yeah, are you able to look at that and think? immediately how that's going to play out in four colors or is that something um, I have to look at it and think and 
make those little dots at the bottom in Photoshop, you know, like, okay, this is a key color. What else? Usually black. Um, it takes a little thought and playing around in Photoshop or, you know, in the old days, just pencil and paper and markers, maybe. Okay, here's my paper and I'm going to lay it against these edges that we created with Gorilla Tape, I think this is. Okay. Lay it down. Can you see? Okay, yeah. You were asked what kind of paper are you using? Oh. Um, I usually use Reeves BFK printmaking paper. This is Arches, though. No, that's, that's Reeves BFK. This is Reeves. It says Arches. I guess it's the same company. <laughs> on, on the pa the plastic case that it comes in, it said Arches. So I guess it's really same company. This is the very first time I've ever used bright white paper for a block print. Do you remember those first few block prints I did? They were on this dingy grayish tan Reeves BFK printmaking paper because I wanted my prints to look like something you had discovered in your grandmother's attic all mm -hmm. dingy and <laughs> faded and earth tones no bright colors and over the years I'm just going more and more colorful more and more Ooh. Do you right. ever experiment with uh, different textures on the paper? No, I have not. And people have invited me to try different interesting textured papers. <sighs> I am not very <laughs> experimental. I don't know why. It ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, thank you. That's very kind of you. Not a lot of playtime, right? Yeah, that's the other thing. I feel like I can't afford to be spending a lot of time just fooling around. I gotta make stuff that will sell. But also, I I'm comfortable. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm always changing a little bit like this bright white paper is a brand new thing and it really makes for quite a different look I was using ivory paper after the the dingy tan paper I switched to ivory but now bright white actually because Bob bought a ton of white paper and I was like why did you buy white paper I never used white paper it was on sale it's just you got a good deal, right? Yeah. Is that why? I was like, we should just get rid of this. And then when it came time to do this series, I thought, huh, I kind of like the idea of going fresh, fresh, clean, bright look. Okay, I don't know if this is, I can't take too long on this. We got to just get this done. You know when you're done. Yeah, how do you? <laughs> you keep, that's the one thing about spoon printing, you can peek and see how you're coming. Yeah. Ooh, got to rub more there. Okay, so I, you might have mentioned, I was going to ask, how did you settle on the spoon? Uh, oh, that's what I was taught at uh, Nazareth. And, and what other, okay. what other ways do so, people do it? Rollers? Uh, oh, or, uh, baron. Uh, oh, baron. Uh, what baron. Is it? And what is it? A baron, uh, yeah. What does it look like? So a brown disc with a padded cover with a big handle on the top and you push it down. Uh, uh, is it flat? Yeah, it's I'll flat and smooth or is it comfy? It's, it's slightly curved curve so that you're not going to catch the edge. It's very back. similar to the back of a spoon. Exactly. All right. Can anybody tell what this... Some of you who get my e-newsletter know, know what it is, but don't it give is. it away. No. Anybody <laughs> tell what this might end up being? Irish, a bird. Sorry? An Irish flower? Iris? Um, no. Good guess. It's hard to tell. Most of us are thinking rabbit right now. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, after a few more colors, maybe you'll start to get an idea. I'm going to show you how I mix colors.
I want to do a nice yellow. I'm not going to tell you. A little too much red in there. I don't want that much red. Are these acrylic or glass plates you're using? Um, they're plexiglass. Okay. okay. So you can sand the edges nicely. They don't hurt yourself. These are not glass cuts, yeah. And you can wash it off. Take that away. That's too oh, red. Yeah. Red is so powerful. I think mm -hmm. I say to get yeah. orangey. Yeah. Do you always use paper to blend with? Oh yeah, this is mat board squares. Mm -hmm. huh. Nazareth taught me to use the mat board squares as my ink mixing tool. I don't know what other printmakers do. See, I have paint all over my hands. <laughs> A little more yellow no. here. More yellow. She would mess up her I know. Huh. Okay. The scrape and smear method. All right, let's print some yellow. Here's my yellow carving. Funky little carving. <coughs> Got to be careful not to get it in the negative space. Oh, one thing I did not mention, I hear you saying separate blocks. There's reduction printing also, and I did use reduction printing method in several, I've used it over the years. I mean, every time I'm planning a print, I think, is there a way that I can use the same carving more than once mm -hmm. for, for more than one color? Use the carving for a color, then you cut away some of it mm -hmm. and use it for another color, and it's easier to line it up against where you already printed with that same block. I did that several times with that Lakeview 2 print the dock carving and the dark shadows use the same block over and over. I just carved away more mm -hmm. each time. The water, same thing. The tree line, same thing. I used the same block over and over, but I had to do separate carving for the black and the sky and the mountains. Can you do multiples at a time like that? Um blended the green and white could you make more prints of that before you yes like, that's like the about way, how many that's the way i used to do it um i would maybe make five prints of color number one and okay. then i would print color number two five times over it oh and of course that's how i do it with the letter press i print all of col color number one on 240 sheets yeah, of paper yeah. mm -hmm. Get the addition done all at once. Oh, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. uh, is that upside down? Yes. Ah, no. I'm confusing myself. Here. Okay. So how do you ensure each block is lined up? Each carving on each block is lined up. Is it and measurements and what did you say? No, that's when you're printing, when, but when you're carving the individual When I'm block. carving, it's a great question. You have the templates, yeah. Okay. This is... Now we know what it is. Mm -hmm. This is a Sharpie drawing that I used mm -hmm. to create these carvings, and I figured out exactly uh, where... I have a line here, okay. a guide for exactly where this Sharpie drawing needs to be taped on here. And I taped it here, exactly here, every time when I was the transferring the image onto the linoleum. That I was not taught at Nazareth. I don't know when I started using this clear plastic, but it 
Oh, we were using tracing paper in those days. <laughs> but this is way better. Orange. How are we doing on time? I think I'm taking too long. So there will be no reduction printing with this one. I have to use a separate block for each color. And I actually just finished printing an entire edition of this on the letterpress yesterday. They are drying at the Flower City Art Center right now. And then I'll take them home tomorrow. How long does it how long do they need to dry? Um, a day or two. Oh, really? In this case, not long, because I don't have a lot of ink overlap. There are some prints, like with that Seasons 4 monster, lots of colors overlapping, and of course they take longer to dry. You know, the more layers you're printing on top of, the longer it's going to take. Do you have to let one color dry before you print the next? Yes, and that's a great question because with yeah. spoon printing, not doing it. you can't let the ink dry before you print over it, or it's really hard to get ink to transfer smoothly and completely on a previous layer of dried ink, which has a pebbly finish. Okay, I've got kind of heavy. Oh my gosh! Oh no! <laughs> okay, I'll talk about that in a minute. The ink is a little bit wet here, so I'm just going to take the excess off. Okay. Well, something freaky just happened. My next carving just Oh. came off the block. Oh, no. <laughs> so, let's see. Real life. Yeah, <laughs> this actually has never happened, but I guess because I was using it to do spoon printing and the solvent I cleaned up with loosened it. Let's see if it's... Oh, I can use this. Yeah. To get it back in the right position. Now, is that actually a separate piece originally that you adhered to the wood block, or is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good grief. Linoleum, right? Yes. <laughs> it's linoleum, and I mount it on this MDF because it happens to be the perfect height mm. for the letterpress. You're not using Gorilla Tape to adhere to <laughs> No, I use this 3M double-sided sheet tape stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember what it's called, but Bob found it. He is the president of procurement at <laughs> Laura Wilder Artwork. <laughs> He's a good hunter-gatherer. Okay, this might be in the right place now. If not, there are two things you can say. If it comes out imperfect, which, you know, often happens. Uh, Ron Nesky, my printmaking professor, said, that's the charm of the handmade print. Right. When I went whining to him, it does not quite perfect here. The charm of the handmade print. That is your mantra. But Bob's rule is, Bob always says, three foot rule. If it looks good from three feet away, good enough. Okay, I want to ask a question that might, it might be a hard question, it might be an inappropriate question. Not, not not to for, worry. For artistic. <laughs> what are the benefits of block printing like this 
artistic benefits or whatever over the gouache prints you did and then mm. making prints of them or doing it all digitally and having prints. Okay. I have, I have, That's a great question. Okay. It's one that I've been pondering for a while. Because <laughs> um, I watch everybody do their artwork. I think this landed in the right place. This little white gap is because I didn't get enough ink on this one, the, the first printing, but it might not end up mattering. <laughs> it looks great from three feet away. It looks, in, it looks intentional, actually. Very far away. <laughs> My wife always told Very me, sure don't me. tell people what's wrong with your piece. Nobody will know. Ah, yes. You just said, you know, let them think that's what you meant to do. <laughs> All right, so block printing, of course, I can get the same look that I love that you get in a block print by doing a gouache painting or a digital painting even. Um, and I have to say that I think it's only a pretty small percentage of my collectors that care whether it's a handmade print or a reproduction. This is true. But the art fairs, we have chosen, I have chosen to do a lot of my selling at art fairs. This will not always be the case, but at art fairs, they have rules. Mm -hmm. You have to have, you know, 75% of your booth has to be handmade. Uh, Only 25% of reproductions allowed. You know, most art fairs have rules like that. So, hmm. That's one reason for continuing to go to all this trouble. Um, so again, their perception is that people desire the handmade. Yes, the that, that's an old-fashioned perception, I think. Well, that's what I, was I think in modern times, especially with the younger generation, mm -hmm. but with everybody also budget-wise, mm -hmm. you know, right. I have to charge more for a block print, a mm -hmm. lot more. Mm -hmm. And it's just not realistic for a lot of people to pay that kind of money for one picture. Right. And if you can sell 100 prints for half the price yeah. of five handmade ones, you're still going to come out ahead or as well. Yes. So I make very clear with, ooh, that's starting to look good. Anybody know what that is now that didn't you know? showed us on the you showed us on your channel. Oh of course I did. I gave it away. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a question. You were speaking earlier about being a Roycroft artist. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that whatever you make you you can package under the Roycroft? Meaning, um, if you do a digital print, is that still considered a Roy Good question. That is a great question. I do not put the Roy Croft mark on my reproductions. I only put... Ugh, it's complicated, kind of. <laughs> it used to be so simple. I was sure for the first 20 years of being a Roy Croft Renaissance artisan, that if it wasn't handmade, you couldn't put the mark on it. But that got all blurry when we admitted a photographer, a guy who does digital photography, as a Roycroft artisan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we printmakers were like, oh, wait a minute, his work is beautiful art, but I thought we were all about handmade. You know, sort of old fashioned. And most most of my fellow Roy Crofters didn't seem concerned about that. So they made a rule that he could only put the mark on the first photograph uh, that he printed of each, you know, first yeah. time he printed an image, one mark would go on that and everyone after that, no mark. Mm -hmm. I don't know, who cares yeah, though? Sure. Among the collectors? Yeah. Yeah. There aren't that many people who are like, oh, if it doesn't have the Roycroft mark on it, I don't want it. Very small percentage of people. So I always, but I still don't put the Roycroft mark on anything but my handmade, and I'm calling my letterpress prints handmade because so much handwork goes into it. 
Um, and on the back of my non-handmade prints, it says, this is an archival quality reproduction made from original artwork by Roycroft Renaissance artisan Laura Wilder. So it says I'm a Roycrofter, but it also says, this is a reproduction, folks. It's an original reproduction. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know what you're getting. So I just kind of screwed up a little. I got ink in the negative space, and now it's showing on the yellow. Boo! I'm not freezing you. <laughs> One of the many ways you can screw it up. Okay. So, speaking of screwing up. And do you number your blocks? No. So you know which order to do them in? Oh, I just know. You just know. Yes. It's because you spent Because so I've time. planned it out. Right. Okay, so this was supposed to be my last carving and printing, and I think it was just Sunday. No, it was Monday. It was yesterday. <laughs> Is that right? I think it was Sunday. It was going to be my last printing, and I brought this to the printing center and ran a couple of black prints and suddenly went, <gasps> and said a lot of very bad words because I forgot to carve the black outlines oh. on the leaf. Oh. This leaf down here is supposed to have black outlines on it. Oh. Duh! I've never made that mistake. That was dumb. Really boneheaded. So, after I printed all these, I went back home and did another carving for the leaf outlines. Oh, no. <laughs> So I'm going to do that just like I did on the letterpress. I'll print this one first and then I'll finish it with that leaf outline. to transfer it really solidly, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to take too long on this. Now, are you saying that for this particular picture, or generally speaking? Just, just because I'm, you guys are sitting here, you want this to be over no, with. I'm about, no, I'm talking about that you want it to be solid, though. Oh, yeah. Because that still gives you an impression, though, of that vintage, doesn't it, if you don't get a solid black line? Oh, They're interesting. I do love that grainy quality, but usually I want the black to be solid and I want the other colors to be grainy if if I'm looking for the grainy thing. When I finish this, I will show you how it looked when I printed it on a letterpress and you will see mm -hmm. quite a difference. Lauren, that brings up a question mm -hmm. I had about wow. the, uh, when you do the gradient on the letter press rolls. Yeah. How many prints do you get off of that one ink? Oh, it varies, but maybe on average four or five. Yeah. So if you're doing and then you re-add ink and and then move the roller back and forth again to make sure it's fading away the way it ought to. So the gradients are going to be different from set to set? Slightly. Slightly, yeah. Slightly. Slightly. yes. That's true. I think in the first few prints, the first 50 prints, there was more sky. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was finished printing, the, the green had crept up a little bit mm -hmm. more. But not, not enough difference that most people would notice. All right, this is a pretty rough looking, handmade charm looking print. <laughs> oh, yeah, only that leaf or outline. 
<laughs> Negative space. Uh oh. And I still have to print that leaf out, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, she did. Oh, wow. she, she, oh, oh you brought the extra. Oh, yeah. the leaf. <laughs> so that's nine blocks. She hasn't shown how to Is it nine? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Do you sign them? Yes. And how? Do you sign I sign them block? everything. Do you, sign them by hand? Do you sign them by hand? Yes. I sign everything except my note cards by hand. Are they numbered? Yes. Okay. So they're signed outside of the print on the bottom. I saw them before. Yeah. yeah. I will and sign it here and number it here, but. This is one of the only block prints that will not have its title written because there isn't room to write this monarch and milkweed. Um, okay. And what do you use to sign? Pencil. You, you do it in pencil. Oh, yeah. And I always wondered, I've seen that over and over. Does that last? I mean, you guys do oh, yeah. it. Pencil it's actually right? lasts because really you, long. Because you do drawings in pencil and they don't disappear, I guess. Is your numbers pencil? I mean, use a darker pencil. I don't really. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> mechanical <laughs> pencil. <laughs> no, it's a Roycroft. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Roycroft pencil. Number forty-six. Okay, and since I had to go and do another carving anyway. I thought, ooh, well, let me make tiny little carvings to cover up a couple of things that I want to fix. Really? Tiny. So that's not just the black line, it's something else. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> Why don't I try to make it a little better? Okay. You're not some kind of perfectionist, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously not. It's gorgeous. In this yeah. case. I know. And See, we don't, something else. We have no idea. All right, so hopefully you can see, I don't know, maybe I should pass it around if anybody cares. This is the letterpress print. And some of them had lighter green in the leaves. Mm -hmm. I, it kind of varied a little bit. But everything is very smooth. The, the, mm -hmm. It really transferred perfectly. Also, my registration is a little off on the yellow here. Here, the orange. I'm gonna make sure. But this is going to be the first in a in series. Pink, I think just different, or more of the darker pink, maybe. Yeah. yeah. A series of prints celebrating important pollinator plants and critters that pollinate. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping if anybody knows anybody who has a native plant pollinator garden that's really pretty, I would love to do a block print, a series of gardens, of uh, people that have done gardens that are meant to be biodiverse and to help improve our ecosystem because I'm reading a book about how important it is for us to just cut back our, our lawns, not have so much lawn, but just have put back native plants and allow more pollination to be going on so that there will be food in the future for humans. Yeah. Yay. So that's my new thing. And that is it. Thank you so much. Thank Please you. Do. If you have any more questions, I am. Yes. Are you going to include the one you did with the spoon with your addition when you make the addition? Nope. That's a trial print. It's an artist proof. It's a trial print. I, okay. I consider artist proofs to, they need to have a certain quality. I, this. This is not high quality enough, so I would, if I did anything with this, I would write TP for trial print. Um, if you did anything with it, you're not going to trash it, are you? Well, if anybody wants it, you can have